Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are in this amazing world. My name is Donovan Jolly, and welcome everybody once again for another amazing video of DIY investing. For today's video, I'm going to be diving into the Bitcoin chart and teaching you guys a lot of my favorite types of analysis to go off of when it comes to overall just trading inside the markets. Now, one of the most important rules that I go off of is hidden bullish divergences. This can be with the RSI, this can be with the MACD, this can be with a number of other indicators, even the volume. And I think it's really important that people understand exactly what this is and how to use it. And then we're also going to be diving into Elliott Wave Theory and then talking about basic uptrends. So people out there have a much deeper understanding of how to go about trading, how to use some of the analysis that I personally use in my own trading plan, and most importantly, how to apply that into the market so that you can profit from it long term. If you're new and just finding this channel, always remember to do me a favor by leaving a like, comment, and subscribing to this channel for more updates. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these new videos like the one provided for you here. And make sure you guys join the Discord server or download my free ebook. Links are going to be provided for you in the description for that. With that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in and let's jump right into this amazing video today. So for today's video, I figured the best value to, I could bring to my community would really just to be to teach you guys a lot of, in my opinion, some of the more key and basic understandings to TA, but some that have really helped me out the most in making profit long term. I really have strong confidence that you guys are going to be able to apply this in your own trading plans exactly in the same ways that I have. And it's going to be able to give you guys a much deeper understanding of what's actually taking place inside of Bitcoin. So th to start off this video, what we're going to be talking about is just some basic terminology, stuff that I'm sure a lot of you guys already know, but it's good to touch up on because I know a lot of people don't. So inside of a market, what is it that actually makes a market bullish or bearish? Well, obviously it's the trend. And so inside of a bull trend, this is what you're going to actually see. This is called an uptrending market. It's where you see higher highs and higher lows. So the market's making a higher high and then it has these little pullbacks, but it's what's known as a higher low. It's always making a higher low than the previous move before it, right? And that's what's making an uptrend all the way through. Now, in a downtrend, it's obviously the reversal point. We are making lower lows and lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. And this is really easy to understand, but I know a lot of people still struggle with that. And they don't really just choose to use it on the shorter time frames. In my opinion, what gives us all a much greater understanding of what's about to take place. Now, this is one of just the most basic rules, but I know a lot of people are still struggling with understanding what's happening inside of the Bitcoin chart. And we can go all the way back and apply this basic principle to early day Bitcoin over here. Inside of the bear market, Bitcoin had this 83, 84% correction from the all-time highs. And then this is where we started our uptrend. But I remember throughout this entire period of time, and even after this capitulation event that happened March of 2020 during COVID, I remember a lot of people were saying that we were still in a downtrend, even after we had bounced all the way back up and we were making higher highs. And there was a few reasons why people thought this. I mean, Bitcoin was still below its all-time highs, but in the short-term trend, it was obvious that we were making higher highs and higher lows, even though a lot of people were caught off guard. And by understanding these basic rules, it's gonna to help to apply in what's happening in today's Bitcoin so that you guys have a much deeper understanding. Because I know a lot of guys are confused, wondering if we're about to go into a bear market. A lot of people are freaking out right now, which is to be understanded. I mean, we've been in a year-long corrective phase. Even though I'm not personally worried about it, I know a lot of people out there are, especially people that have never been through a bear cycle cycle or have never at least been through an entire bull cycle because this has just been a very volatile period. Now, this is where we get our low, right? This is the very first low that we ever put in. Um, and this was the lowest low that we put in here inside of the bull run, right? So this is our low, and then that's where Bitcoin broke up to 14K. Now, if you guys notice, Bitcoin had a big sell-off throughout this period of time. We had a 72% correction all the way back down um, from the bottom of that correction, right? And it was a very volatile time, but keep in mind, this low put in right here is a higher low from this one, right? We still didn't go below $3,200, which was the low of the bear market. We, you know, we our low here was about 4,000, 3,800, depending on which exchange you're actually looking at, but it was still higher than our all-time low. And so this is still a higher low. And this move to 14K was obviously our higher high, right? So our low, higher high, higher low. And then this is where we started breaking up. I remember when we were at this point here where we had just flipped 
this previous resistance at about 10K. And a lot of people were still saying that this was bearish. We weren't going to be breaking out. And I was one of the people that was very confident that we were going to be breaking out because of the fact we had put in a higher low from this move down here. I knew that this was an uptrend. Yes, we were below the all-time high at 20,000, but this is still the bear, the very early stages of an uptrend. And so we're, we were right here in this first move. Bitcoin bottomed at 3,200, 14K, back down to like 3,800 here. This was our first move in that uptrend. And so even though we were below our previous all-time high, we can still make the beginning stages of an uptrend and it will happen still below the previous resistance in a cycle, right? And so that's what catches a lot of people off guard. Now, keep in mind that we're at this point here in this trend where we've made another higher high that took us all the way up here to 65K and then we made another higher low because keep in mind when we sold off here and we bottomed it, you know, 29,000, uh, it was still a much higher low than the low we put in over here at 3,800, right? So this is still uptrending. If we drew a trend line from here, um, it wouldn't line up super well. Uh, but we can see that this is still making higher highs and higher lows overall on this parabolic trend. Now, this is where we get into the part where this has caught a lot of people off guard, where we have basically made another higher high, where we broke all the way up here to 69,000, but then we sold off immediately back down. And so this has caught a lot of people off guard, including myself. You guys already know that I was calling for the end of the year blow off top. Obviously that did not happen because we ended up making this new sell off here. And we've been through a much longer corrective period. All this proved was that we're going through a longer cycle. That's the only thing that approved. And so during this period, um, if we didn't make a lower low in any sort of way, I've always been confident in assuming that we were gonna be breaking up higher. And so keep in mind guys, that this is all the same stuff. This was a higher high from the low that we stitched in here. We broke out of the all-time highs. We had our first sell-off. This was the move to 29,000 to 29,000. This was still a higher low, right? And then we break up again. We make another new all-time high, even though it was just barely above the previous higher high. And then we sold off back down. Where we bottomed was still once again higher than our previous low that we stitched in at 29,000. This entire period of time where we saw all of these little wicks where these buyers were stepping in and they were accumulating every time people panic sold. And then what did we see right here? Even during this sell-off period, we're making a higher low over this one here, and we're still seeing the same exact consolidation where these wicks are coming in, buyers are stepping in, the market's coming up. Now, what do we have today? Well, obviously the market's selling off once again, but we're still in this choppy period. Nothing has changed, and in my opinion, what we see here based off of just one of the more basic rules of analysis, we have an obvious uptrend that has not changed. There is no change in this trend. There is no reason to assume that there's a bear market or we've started a bear market because nothing has changed in the uptrend. This is still higher highs, higher lows, bullish market structure. Now we need to get into some more uh, important type of analysis, in my opinion, where we're going to actually be talking about, um, let's see, where is it over here? divergences. So divergences is something I've talked a lot on this channel. And the reason I've talked a lot about these is because in my opinion, these are some of the biggest indicators that we can get before major reversal points inside of the market. And I will share with you guys some uh, examples, even though I already have many times on this channel. Now, this is going to go through weak, medium, and strong um, types of signals. And then these are going to be hidden uh, signals, right? Ones that most people wouldn't catch. Now, one's up here, types of divergence. This is a strong divergence. Now, this is where you're seeing the price make a lower low, right? Prices are making a lower low, but the oscillator, whether it's a MACD, whether it's the RSI, whether it's the volume, it could be a number of indicators that you use. Even the OBV is accurate in this sense. If the oscillator is making a higher high, and the price is making a lower low, that's a really strong bullish divergence. It's a really, really, really strong indicator that I've been able to use a lot to make a lot of money. Now, if we do the opposite, a strong bearish divergence signal, the price makes a higher high and then the oscillator makes a lower high, right? So that would be just the opposite effect. But this is exactly the same thing that we're seeing today. You know, nothing has changed on the bigger picture. We're still seeing this exact same consolidation. Let's actually go to a weekly time frame. 
where it's a little bit of a stronger indicator. Keep in mind, when it comes to these indicators, the bigger the time frame, the stronger the indication is. Now keep in mind that this being a lower low on our oscillator being the RSI and a higher high in price, this is a really strong bullish divergence signal that's being given off here. And this isn't the only indicator that's giving off these sort of signals. And so with that being said, with us only showing the same bullish market structure, higher highs, higher lows, all the way throughout this entire period of time, including our most recent attempt here, even though we're seeing this sell off again, this is just a buy opportunity. I wouldn't be surprised if we came all the way back down and retested this trend line, which could be you know $35,000 per Bitcoin. I really wouldn't be surprised. We might see a little bit of a relief bounce before that, but I really wouldn't be surprised to see some volatility like this. This is a period of time that's very similar to over here, where we saw a lot of up and down price action, a lot of people getting stopped out for over trading, and this is no different. The reason why I have been absent and have been focusing more time on other stuff is just simply because I felt like there's not much that's changing inside of the market. I can continue to sit here and say the same things. I'm not a big short-term trader, I like to focus on the bigger picture uh, timeframes. And this has really been the ever continuing thesis that I've had for quite some time. You know, uh, the end of the year was here. We did get a sell off that took us lower, but this entire move is still maintaining the same structure that we've seen throughout the entire period of time. Now, these are two indicators that I have coupled together to give you guys a really strong indication of what the trend is gonna do. In my opinion, it's going to break up. You guys already know. I think that we're going to have one more big blow off top to close out the cycle. And I want to give you guys one more final indication as to why I believe that that's so. And that's going to be Elliott Wave Theory. Now, this is something I t teach you guys a lot about, but I felt like today was going to be a really good time to give you guys an educational video because these are uh, three things that I think are glaringly obvious in the Bitcoin chart that are really beginner friendly to understand. It doesn't take a genius to understand this stuff. And that's why I really like the analysis that I share with you guys on YouTube and my personal analysis is I like to make it simple. I like to focus on the big picture because you can make so much more money by focusing in on certain projects, getting in early to them, holding them, and then basically waiting until the end of the blow off top by selling. And that's when you make and realize the majority of your profit. I mean, I've sold a lot of stuff too early. That's what everybody does. But I'm telling you guys, if you hold until the blow off top, even if you sell early in the blow off top, you'll make a lot of money in that process and you'll be thankful that you did. Now, one of the ways in which I foresee a blow off top is based off of Elliott Wave Theory. Now, Elliott Wave Theory shows that we're gonna have three impulse waves. Now, impulses are, ev or impulses are odd numbers and corrections are even numbers, right? And so we have one, two, three, four, and then five. That's our impulse, right? So there's one impulse wave, there's two impulse waves and there's three impulse waves. And then we get a correction here, right? The only thing that we're talking about here right now is the impulse itself. Inside of each impulse, you have these little waves and you have three sets of three. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, and then that's in wave one. Then one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, that's in wave two. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C. And that's the finish of a cycle, right? So inside of Bitcoin, we are seeing the exact same thing um, inside of Elliott Wave Theory, where we've seen wave one, we've seen wave three, in my opinion, this is wave four, and now what we're about to see is wave five inside of this cycle. We've only ever seen our wave one and wave three. There isn't a final five wave impulse inside of this that you can count. And we can come in here and actually look at our subwaves and prove that we don't have a five wave here. This was wave one, this was wave three, this was wave five, right? A, B, C, that was wave one. Then we did the same exact thing up here. This was wave one, this was wave three, and then this was wave five, A, B, C. And now we're getting a bigger, more complicated correction where this was, this is a much bigger corrective move where we're seeing multiple corrections. So I'm not gonna try and get into the details of what exact type of corrective phase this is. The big thing to understand here is we've only had three impulse waves here, three impulse waves here, and we've been in corrective moves ever since. This is just a big corrective structure. This wasn't, in my opinion, an impulse that would constitute a blow off top. This isn't an impulse that, in my opinion, would even be considered a five wave, even though I know a lot of people are calling it that. A lot of people are drawing it like this. They're drawing that this is wave five and that we're about to just do something like this. A, B, C, and crash all the way to 10K, which you know I do understand, but I personally just don't agree with that. 
Uh, I personally agree that we would have one more final five wave push that is going to be the blow off top that takes us past 200,000. So, you know, a lot of people are going to have a hard time believing that. But I mean, a lot of people had a hard time believing me when I was saying that Bitcoin would be going to these valuations really early on in the bear market. And that's the thing, guys, is nobody's ever going to truly think it's going to happen until it happens. And then when it happens, everybody gets overconfidence and then buys the top of the cycle. I've been really just kind of laid off of crypto because I've been focusing on a lot of other stuff at hand, been focusing on things in my personal life. And now that we're at this point in the cycle where I know a lot of people are going to get chopped up with this sell off here, with us coming back down on the shorter time frames, you know, I think a lot of people are getting ready to panic sell in the same way that they did throughout this period, in the same way they did throughout this period. But I mean, I just gave you guys three examples of really strong indicators that are showing, you know, that nothing has changed in the bigger picture. And what we have to, still to come is the final move in this cycle. We've seen a very lengthy period of consolidation here, guys. This is a long period of time, like a year basically, that we've been stuck in this uh, triangle-like contraction. When this ultimately breaks bullish, like I believe it will, this is gonna be a very big move to the upside in the same way that we've seen previous blow off tops inside of Bitcoin cycles. You know, we can look back to 2013 inside of Bitcoin. We had a massive, massive move here. This would be uh, us going to basically 280K if we followed this fractal. If we follow the 2017 fractal, which our blow off top was right here from 3K all the way to 20K, right? If we follow that fractal, then Bitcoin would go to 250K this cycle. So that's why I've had my targets anywhere from 250 to 290K. That's where I personally believe that Bitcoin is gonna be headed. A lot of people are gonna be doubting that, but in my opinion, that's just what I think is gonna be plausible. So this is the analysis I wanted to give you guys. I wanted to give you guys some more education, give you guys an insight into the market that maybe you haven't been considering, or maybe you didn't fully understand in prior videos. If you guys found value in this, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these amazing videos. If you guys want to join the Discord server, download my free ebook. Links are going to be provided for you in the description for that. You guys can also sign up for my VIP course, Signals, and follow all the trades and private analysis that I do inside my group. All the NFT picks and whatnot that I do, all of that gets posted in there. If you guys want to join, links are going to be provided in the description for all of that. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. As always, peace out.